All right, we're going to switch out computers here, and let me reintroduce Janice Allen to you. I see they just uh, bumped in the dark. It's one of the dangers of a completely black box. Um, and little devices setting off lights. Let me say again, um, thank you. Can I use this? Can you turn this on? Um, so if you were not here yesterday, um, let me reintroduce Janice Allen. Um, who is the uh, head of the John E. Allen co family of companies and uh, runs a preservation facility currently known as Cinema Arts and is a uh, world-renowned, a leading expert in film preservation. Um, Cinema Arts is a world-renowned re uh, service provider for uh, museums, archives, and filmmakers. And I'm going to let now, we're going to run a little bit later than what's on our schedule. Um, and Janice has said, you, well, you will say when it is that people can ask you questions, right? Uh, you can ask them at any time. You can blurt out what, if you have questions, if you want to yell and scream, whatever you want. Um, and we're going to run right into the film because we're a little short on time. Okay. And I'll do this side a real change, OK? But, but uh, wait a minute. Wait, well, this is a different control. You want to tell me about it? Uh, uh, the expert is here. Is there, a, is there a pointer? Okay. And how about the... That, that's uh, no. cool. No? You have to use the keyboard. You have to use this. Okay. So this is just the pointer. Right. Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Actually, we want it off at the moment, but... but uh, It's going to be tricky. <laughs> okay, you can roll the first reel. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, then maybe I'll do this then. Okay. Um, I wanted to start with uh, way back with the 2709 camera and the Bell and Howell company, and that's it right there. Uh, shooting a scene. I had a whole lot of information about it, but we don't have enough time, so uh, I just wanted to say that uh, in 1907, Bell and Howell came up with a whole system for making steady movies on the screen, and it, it entailed a camera, uh, a printing machine known as a Model D, which I think we have a picture of here, one up in the left-hand corner there. The 2709 in the bottom, uh, that camera was uh, extremely steady. Uh, the optical printers we use today are based upon that uh, device that was, came out in 1912, I believe. Uh, just like film came out a long time ago, we're, we're still using the same technology. Uh, but the, t the machine on the top left is, uh, is still being used in some labs. Uh, and that came out in 1911, I think, uh, somewhere around in there. So uh, the one on the right is a reduction machine, uh, also based on that very solid uh, movement, which was a fixed pin. Uh, in most motion picture cameras today, the f pin moves in and out of the film. Uh, in this camera, the film is pushed onto pins that are fixed, which is absolutely the most steady way to make an image because the moving pin has a little slop in it. The fixed pin doesn't move anywhere. So you, you put, as long as the film is perforated correctly, uh, it works really well. And, and of course, Bell and Hell also came out with uh, the perforator to perforate film, which was also, that was the first thing they came out with in 1908, and it was wildly successful, and th then they went on to these other devices. 
um, that we weren't supposed to see. That's a 2709 right there. Uh, this is, I guess, a plate on a 2709. That's a very common early plate. This is more like uh, a modern derivative of a Bell & Howell printing machine. So we went from the Model D to, uh, this is a 6000 series. Uh, this is actually a BHP, which was a company that took over uh, the Bell & Howell machines. Uh, and basically Bell & Howell kind of messed up at the end and uh, they built this machine. This was a, a liquid gate printer and uh, it didn't work very well initially. Uh, and they just kind of gave up and didn't support it and didn't make customers happy and the employees uh, that were involved with the machine took over the device and made it work. Uh, and it is very much a standard of the industry, just like the Model D. I, I think that uh, it could be said that uh, there's more Bell & Howell printers used in the world than any other machine, uh, even today. Uh, and this, if you see a feature uh, in a theater, very often it's printed on this kind of a machine. So these, and it's called a modular printer. It can be used wet or dry. You can put 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter on it. And they, uh, they're amazing. They're really amazing. Uh, you're going to see things tonight that were printed on this machine, uh, both the liquid gate preprint elements and the actual prints. They were all printed on this machine. Uh, the Model D, here's the Bell & Howe perf up at the top. That's what they came up with in 1907. And it's still the standard today. Uh, all these years later. The, the next one down is your print perf KS, and the Russians actually use that for their cameras. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's, how do we, can I, I go back here? Just down? What's going to happen? When I, oh, this is one, another mistake. <laughs> I, thought, I just came across this. I thought it was a, a very odd ad. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeff tells me in the 50s they did a lot of weird things, so, you know. Uh, but, you know, the finest projection equipment, okay. It's on the radar, it's 